Hey guys, and welcome back to Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Let's pick up right where we left off, which was just being able to approach the manor. Our story so far. A letter requesting help brings Professor Layton and his assistant Luke to the remote St. Mystere. After solving a puzzle, the pair are able to cross the drawbridge that leads into the village. Now Luke and Leighton must go to Reinhold Manor, residence of Lady Dahlia, the author of the letter. So I think we got all the hint coins last time, so we're going to head straight up to the manor. Wow, can you imagine living in such a massive place? I was actually looking for hint coins. Garden's big, but there's not much to look at. Doesn't seem to be any hint coins here. Nope, there's one. And there's another one. Probably no more than that, I'd say. Okay. Raymond, and who and just who might you be? My name is Leighton, and this is my assistant. We received an invitation to visit Reinhold Manor. Ah, yes, yes. Oh, hoo hoo hoo. We've all been expecting you, Professor Leighton. But, hoo hoo, you'll have to excuse my scepticism. Can't trust anyone these days, you know. For all I know, you could be just another hoo hoo hooligan in a top hat. A hoo hoo hoo. So how do I know you're the real Leighton? Did you hear that, Professor? The nerve of this fellow. Surely you aren't going to go through with this after an insult like that. Now, now, Luke, settle down. Sir, are you saying that you'd like to test me to see if I am the real Professor Leighton? Precisely, Professor Leighton. Now, if you don't mind, would you please solve this puzzle for me? I'll give it my best. Wolves and chicks, worth 50 picarats. Get the three wolves and three chicks seen below to the other side of the river while obeying the following conditions. I love this. This is the river puzzle. Okay. No more than two animals can ride the raft at the same time. There must be at least one animal on the raft in order for it to move. If more wolves than chicks stay on either side of the river, the wolves will eat the chicks, and you'll have to start over. You can move the raft as many times as you like, but this feat can be accomplished in as few as 11 moves. Alright, this might take us a while, so get comfy. So I think the idea is to go... What is it? Wolf and chick. And get over there now. Send the chick back. Now, wolf and chick. No. Okay, well, fair enough. Wolf and chick. Wolf and wolf. That might work. Wolf has to go back. Wolf and wolf. Wolf goes back. Chick and chick. Wolf and chick. Chick and chick.
Wolf. Wolf and wolf. Wolf. Wolf and wolf. There we go. 11 moves. Cool. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I got 11 trips, but I did, uh, did die the first time, so. A hoo hoo hoo. Do you excuse my early rudeness? Let me show you to the manor. Everyone's waiting for you. Everyone? I was under the impression that Lady Dahlia was the only person expecting me. Right this way, please. Head for Reinhold Manor. Is this the manor, Professor? It's positively gigantic. Just look at the size of it. It certainly seems like we've come to the right place. Chapter 1. Reinhold Manor awaits. Chapter solved. Professor and Luke finally arrive at Reinhold Manor. Let's head in, shall we? Yes, sir. We'll uh, look for some hit coins. Kind of wish there was like a hint coin hunting mode where it wouldn't pop up with these text dialogues when all I want is that uh, that sweet gold right. welcome to Reinhold Manor thank you for coming I am Matthew butler and servant to the Reinhold family. Everyone is waiting upstairs for you. Ah, but before you go, I have a message from Lady Dahlia. She has requested that you take a look at this puzzle. Please do not be taken aback. Madam has the strangest sense of propriety sometimes. Spinning the match around, practicing for this puzzle. One poor pooch. Ah, I think I've done this before. The matches below are arranged in the shape of a dog. This poor little guy was just minding his own business when a car came barreling down the road and ran him over. Move two matches to change the picture so that it shows the dog after the accident. All puzzles are a matter of perspective, so don't assume that you'll be looking at the dog from the side by the time you're finished with this one. Um, I believe it's... Like that, squished. Yeah, there we go, I remember that one. car flattened the poor dog. Let this be a lesson to be aware of surroundings when driving. Aware of your surroundings. Not just surroundings in general. That's absolutely correct. My commendations, sir. Again, I do apologise for the strangeness of the request. Now please walk this way. We mustn't keep Lady Dahlia and company waiting. I missed the puzzle somehow. How did I miss a puzzle? Uh, maybe this is it. This should be puzzle 8, hopefully. Professor, look at these paintings on the wall here. It's 
very nice portrait, isn't it? I bet that's the late Baron Reinhold picture there. But what about this one, Professor? Who could this pretty girl be? The two portraits are next to each other, so they're likely family. She's probably the Baron's daughter. That's exactly right, sir. You are looking at the portrait of Flora, the late Baron's daughter. Pardon me for asking, but I couldn't help but notice your keen interest in art. Would you care to take this old frame with you? It used to hold the most wonderful painting. However, now all that's left of it is this small scrap. You found a painting scrap. The painting option has been added to the trunk. You can assemble the fragments of the old painting here. I don't think I ever finished that. I don't remember it being a uh, hugely integral part of my game. So is this a piece of that old painting then? How interesting. I was actually after a puzzle there because I seem to have missed one somewhere. Maybe this one. Bookshelves seem to line every wall of this estate. The Baron must have been quite the avid reader. It's important to keep your mind sharp, Luke, so why don't you give this puzzle a go? Maybe this is puzzle 8, hopefully. 10. No, I've missed one somewhere. Alphabet. Alright, here's a quick and easy one. The first letter of the alphabet is A, and the letter B comes after the letter A. However, the letter you need to worry about is the last one. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Here's a hint, it isn't Z. T then, I'd assume. The alphabet. Yeah, M, that's what I wanted. Yeah, not so much a puzzle, that's kind of a riddle, that one. Alrighty. Good job. The last letter in the word alphabet is the letter T. Funny buggers. How did you like the puzzle, Luke? I hope it has prepared you for tackling more difficult puzzles. Let's have a look at the puzzle index. Yeah, I'm not sure when... Eight is. Can we go back and look for it, maybe? Yes, we can. Excellent. So, seven was the Fisher dude, so is it around here somewhere? He didn't really give me a puzzle here, though, did he? I sort of tapped on everything, I'm pretty sure. find it later. Let's head up. Wait, maybe if I talk to that guy. Honestly, why am I constantly surrounded by incompetence? This is a disaster. Whatever is the matter? Oh, this is simply terrible. My dear sweet baby, my Claudia. Your Claudia. Sweet, sweet Claudia. My little honeykins, my smoochy pie, my baby. Matthew, Matthew. Yeah. 
was going to go back and try and talk to Matthew. Madam, what is it? What in the world happened? My little Claudia got scared and ran off. Didn't you see her dart out of the room? I, I must have missed her. I'm terribly sorry, madam. Oh, you're just useless, aren't you? Professor, you didn't see which way my baby ran off to, did you? Your baby, madam. If you're referring to that white cat, I saw it run out that door a moment ago. What? And you simply stood there and let her escape? Well, she is a cat. They are animals, after all, and animals must run about from time to... You fool. She's not just a cat. She has a name, and that name is Claudia Reinhold. She is a delicate flower, and she is simply a mess when I am not close by to comfort her. Matthew, I need you to find Claudia and bring her back immediately. About this little inheritance problem of yours, Lady Dahlia. That can wait. Can't you see that we have a more pressing concern on our hands at the moment? You could have stopped her and you didn't, so you have a responsibility to find Claudia and bring her back. Humph. Sending the professor off to find a silly cat. The nerve. Who do you think you are? Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, it's fine, Luke. Besides, Lady Dahlia does have a point. It does seem we let Claudia run off. Madam, if you'll excuse us, we have a cat to track down. Thank you, and please hurry. My Claudia is such a delicate flower. Even the coarse outdoor air might prove too much for her. Chapter 2. The Fugitive Feline Lady Dahlia's cat has escaped. Search St. Mystia for the runaway feline. Looking for some hint coins. Ooh, puzzle. Hopefully. Look, there's a puzzle hidden here, Professor. <laughs> Just in the chandelier. As you do. 110. Jesus. The vanishing cube. Another match puzzle. Okay. On the table below are four cubes made up of matches. Can you change four cubes to three by moving a single match? I can get rid of this one. Can I draw? No. I can get rid of this one here, but I don't think it counts a rectangle as a cube. Ah, but we get rid of that one, and there's three. What? How is that incorrect? No. The arrangement of the matches fools your eyes into thinking that you're looking at four cubes. How can you fool your eyes into seeing three cubes instead? I thought I did. Okay. So we'll lose a couple of picarets off that. Uh, right, yes, because there's no up and down beam, like, here. I understand. Okay. Okay. I'm moving a single match so we don't have to rotate it hopefully. Oh, hang on, that might be right. had the right idea, just the wrong execution. There we go. Silly. Moving a single matchstick completely changes your perspective on the shape. So why are there matches just chucked up in the chandelier? Bit strange. So I suppose if 110 was here, we still have a chance to find Puzzle 8 somewhere else uh, 
I didn't tap on him, but sure. Dolly, I sure is fond of that cat. I assume that you're the famous Professor Layton, yes? My name is Gordon. I'm one of the people who originally requested your services. I'd like to explain our situation further, but right now it's probably best to do as Lady Dahlia says. <laughs> Who's got puzzles for me? The name's Simon. I'm Baron Reinhold's nephew. My father is the little brother of Gordon there. Or rather, he was, until he kicked the bucket, as they say. But I digress. See, you're the famous Professor Layton. Hmm. I thought you'd have more presents. Well, never mind. I take it you won't mind if I throw a puzzle your way. It shouldn't prove difficult for a man of your ability. Yes, if you're as good as they say, this shouldn't amount to much more than a distraction. I am as good as they say. Arc and line. Ew. Gross. Hate geometry. Okay. As shown in the diagram below, you have one fourth of a circle. Within this circle is rectangle A, B, C, D, which touches the edge of the circle at point D. Assuming that point B is located at the center of the circle, how long is diagonal line AC? Yep. This is exactly like my maths exams. Having some serious flashbacks here. Okay. Excellent, I can write. Okay. So the hypotenuse is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if this is 5, then... Well, that doesn't help. Hang on. I might be overthinking this. What if I just draw one like that? Yeah. It appears my DS is out of calibration. Not sure how it just becomes out of calibration. Okay. So this is five. Oh, you know what? It's the exact same shape. Okay, well this is 5. That's 5. Then this is 5 inches. And... So this whole thing is 10 inches, this is 5, this is 5, this is 5, I'm going to have to use a hint coin I think. Surely somebody must have looked at the diagram and realised that the triangle formed by points A, B and C is a right triangle. That's sharp thinking and exactly right. However, are you sure there isn't a much easier way to find the answer? Okay, so I think that hint's telling us that we don't have to use um, Pythagorean, what is it, Pythagoras' theorem.
Use another hint coin. You don't need the Pythagorean. Yeah, there we go. You don't need the Pythagorean theorem to answer this one. Something else in the diagram should be the exact same length as AC. Notice that diagonal line AC within the rectangle is the same size as the diagonal line BD. Have you also noticed that BD is also the same length as another part of this diagram? BD, that is it. Diagonal line BD, yes I have noticed that. What is, how does that help me though? Sure it's not five inches. I'm going to try 5 inches, but I don't think it's correct. Nope. Okay. Look at things again. You shouldn't have to do any difficult calculations to get the answer. Easy for you to say when you know the answer. As shown in the diagram below, you have one full, okay. BD is also the same length as another part of this diagram. Oh my god. BD is the radius, which is 10 inches. Okay, so if we go from B to D, That's going to be the radius, so that would be 10 inches. And if A and C are the same size, A, C, and B, D are the same size, then it is 10. That took way longer than I would like to admit. cost me some marks in an exam, I think. Oh ho, it appears that you're the real deal, Professor. I apologise for doubting you there. It seems you've quite the mind for puzzles. But, oh ho ho, how unfortunate you must waste your time on one of the, these ridiculous cat chases. They happen all the time, yet every time that cat slips out, Lady Dahlia causes the biggest fuss. Don't even bother trying to talk her down. The best thing you can do is just go and find that cat. If you're as bright as they say, you should have no trouble tracking down one little cat, right? Oof, that took too long. 
I'm pretty determined to not use a walkthrough though. Why are you still here? Do us all a favour and find that cat so we can discuss the inheritance. I'm looking for puzzles, my friend. Why are you still here? My precious Claudia is out there alone. Go find her and bring her back at once. Alright, he's up, sunshine. Did he have puzzle eight, maybe? I'm terribly sorry, Professor. I will personally search the manor and the estate grounds. I feel dreadful asking, but would you mind taking a quick look about the town to see if Claudia is there? Don't give it a second thought, my good man. We're on the case. Such a nice fellow. I found the cat. Professor, there she is. Drat, she ran off. We can't stop now. Let's give chase, Luke. Cough, hack, hack. Blast, that burns. It looks like the engine blew out. So this is St. Mysterie, the famed stomping ground of the late Baron Augustus Reinhold. I wonder what kind of tricks the old coot set up in this village before he shuffled off. Oh, Leighton, you ridiculous dandy, just you wait. All the treasure you seek will be mine. <laughs> I love that they put the nye in there. Alrighty, let's head on back. Ah, oh, this guy's back. Do you have Puzzle 8? This game should be called Professor Leighton and the Search for Puzzle 8. Oh, it's you, Mr. Please call me Raymond. Oh, hoo hoo. Can I be of some assistance? As a matter of fact, yes, Raymond. Lady Thalia's cat might be Ramon. I'm saying Raymond, for crying out loud. Lady Thalia's cat slipped out of the house. Have you seen her about? Do you mean dear Claudia? I think I saw her pass through here and run into town a few moments ago. If that's the case, I sure wish you'd bother to catch her before she ran away. Yes, sorry, Ramon. I've been calling you Raymond. This fellow's back. Have you seen Claudia? You need something? You do, don't you? Yep, I can see it on your face. An open book is what you are. Excuse me, but you didn't happen to see Lady Dahlia's cat to come through here a moment ago, did you? Ah, uh, the fluffy white killer, yeah? I think she ran toward the town square. Yep, she went that away. I see, thank you. Think nothing of it, buddy. If only all questions were that easy to answer. Well then, I'll be off now. Who'd have thought he'd turn out to be such a nice guy? Shall we head for the town square then? Indeed, let's be off. Hold on, let's take a look at what's behind the blue door. Do you see it? That blue door over there appears to be open a crack. Care to take a look inside? Bit of a peeping Tom, little general stop. Tell you what, there's something really satisfying about finding hint coins in this game. It's just like tapping around on tiny little things and then bling. There's something I find very charming about this chair. Oh, that reminds me, Luke. Have you heard this one before? <laughs> I love it. Uh, look at that chair. Oh, here's a puzzle. Which chair? A new multi-purpose event hall has been built in the centre of your town. It will be used for everything from concerts to sporting events to conventions. With the hall complete, it's time to order the chairs. Five chair designs, labelled A through E, are being considered, but of all the designs, only one chair is completely suitable for the auditorium. Which chair is it? Probably E, right? Concerts to sporting events to conventions. 
This is a really weird puzzle. It's going to be E, surely. The wheels are not appropriate. Maybe D, actually. That's not too bad. Yeah, probably D, so they can't steal it. I'm assuming D is bolted to the ground. Let's go D. Wait, D would be a, a spinning chair, wouldn't it? So then E, I guess. Okay, that's a weird one. What a strange puzzle. Oh, because it stacks. Is that seriously it? <laughs> I didn't even think about stacking. That's fair enough, though. I was thinking in terms of, like, needing uh, seeds to be, you know, available for different sized people to sit in. So no arms locking them in if they're too big, and not spinning chairs. Well done, I suppose this puzzle was too easy for you, my boy. A painting scrap, thanks. Weird puzzle, Leighton. Here we go, a little hint coin. Look here, my boy. This extinguished candle has reminded me of a simply wonderful puzzle. Number 15, how many are left? Ten candles stand burning in a dining room. A strong breeze blows in through an open window and extinguishes the two of them. Checking back in on the candles later, you see that one more candle has gone out. To make sure no more flames go out, you shut the window. Assuming the wind doesn't extinguish any more candles, how many candles do you have left in the end? How many candles do I have left? Well, I still have ten candles. No. What is with this? Half of them are trick questions. Try again. How many candles do I have left? I have ten candles in a room, correct? See that one more candle has gone out. So, two, three. To make sure no more flames go out, do you shut the window, assuming the wind doesn't extinguish any more? How many candles do you have left in the end? So if it's not ten, and we leave them burning for an hour. What if they don't last that long? Would it be zero? Let's try zero. How many candles do you have left in the end? That doesn't say how long you come back, so. Yeah, zero. They'll all burn out. No, not zero. Puzzle asks you to figure out how many candles you have left in the end, but what does that actually mean? Right, for eight picarats, ten candles burning in a room. Strong breeze blows in through an open window and extinguishes two of them. Eight candles remaining. Checking back in on the candles later. Uh, I don't know where I got an hour from, but yeah. You see that one more candle has gone out, leaving seven. To make sure no more flames go out, you shut the window. Assuming the wind doesn't extinguish any more candles, how many candles do you have left in the end? I still have ten candles. Okay. Maybe let's use a hint coin. 
It may seem straightforward, but it wouldn't be a puzzle if there wasn't a trick to it. That chair one was pretty straightforward. How many candles do you have left in the end? Yep, thank you. Another hint coin. The wind blows out two candles, and then shortly afterward blows out one more. How many candles are extinguished? Three. The candles that aren't extinguished by the wind continue to burn. What will happen to these candles if they are allowed to keep burning? Yep, that's what I said, they all go out. Did I not put zero? How many can- oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm with you now. You're right. So, three candles got blown out. The other ones don't get blown out, but they melt away to nothing. So we're left with the three that got blown out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I really like that one. Yeah. Seven candles that managed to stay lit will melt down completely. <laughs> That's a clever one. I like that one. Excellent work, my boy. Sometimes it's important to consider the obvious, too. Delving too deep into the implied can cause misconceptions. I really like that puzzle. That was a good one. Okay, I think we're done in the shop. And head to the town square. Hey, you two, help me out here, would you? I'm in a real pickle. What seems to be the problem, sir? Some knucklehead went and raised the bridge while I was on break. Rumpf. Then, as if it wasn't bad enough, that jowed head made off with my only bridge crank. Rumpf. Oh dear, so you mean to say? Rumpf. You got it, buddy. Until that thing shows up, no one is getting in or out of town. I'm still looking for the blasted crank, but I'm seeing too much red to get anything done. Rumpf. What kind of punk pulls a prank like this, anyhow? Oh yeah, I found this dude out in the street when I was out looking for my crank. Got any idea what it is? A strange gizmo. The gizmos option has been added to the menu. Touch the trunk to open it, then tap the gizmos icon. From here, try to assemble the various mechanical parts you've gathered around town. The vanishing crank was added to your list of mysteries. Okay, I think we might call that an episode. So I'd like to thank you for joining me with another romp around town with Professor Layton and Luke. And I hope to see you guys next time.